So when we visualize data organized as a graph, we'll likely want to lay it out in a plane. There's a kind of graph that uh, enables that called a planar graph. So as we saw before, we're going to represent data items as nodes and edges between nodes uh, will represent relationships between those data items. In some cases, we'll have a graph, a planar graph, for example. A planar graph can be drawn such that the edges connecting the nodes don't cross. That's called a planar embedding. The same planar graph, in this case, you've got the same four nodes connected by the same uh, five edges. In this non-planar embedding, the edges cross. And so the same graph, they're both planar graphs. What we'd like to do is be able to find the embedding, the way to lay out the nodes so that the edges don't cross. So it'll be clearer to the observer the relationship between the nodes. So we can do this. We can do this for very large graphs. For example, um, here's a, a triangle mesh representing a geometric object. It's a triangle mesh, so the vertices are nodes, and the edges of the triangles form the edges between the nodes. This graph, this large graph of 50,000 nodes, is not a planar graph. But if I make cuts in it, if I separate the faces and duplicate edges, I can turn it into a planar graph just by making these cuts along the black lines. And as a planar graph, I can then find a way of embedding it into the plane so that the edges don't cross. Now, there's so many nodes and so many edges in this graph that it's hard to see all of the edges, so trust me that they don't they don't cross. Hopefully you'll be working with fewer nodes and edges so that your layouts will be a little, little more clear than this. So there's a way we can find these embeddings automatically um, and it's called Tut's method. And it starts by picking some of your nodes and defining where they should be in the layout. So in this case I'm going to use eight nodes, 12 edges that make a cube, and I'm going to take these first four nodes and I'm going to find positions for them in, for example, an SVG canvas. I'm going to position node 1 at 0, 0, node 2 at 1, 0, node 3 at 0, 1, and node 4 at node 1, 1. And then I'm going to try to figure out where do I want to position nodes 5, 6, 7, and 8 in order to make a planar embedding of this graph. This graph is uh, shown in a non-planar embedding because we've got edge crossings. We want to find out how to make a planar embedding of it. So in order to do this automatically for any graph, we're going to need to solve a uh, linear system. So we'll create a uh, matrix. In fact, an adjacency matrix, a special kind of adjacency matrix called a Laplacian matrix. So it's an adjacency matrix, which means I'm going to take one node to another node in, in case of node 1 is connected to node 2, so in row 1, column 2, I'm going to have a non-zero entry. In this case, the non-zero entry is going to be 1 over the degree. The um, node 1 has degree 3, it has three edges ex extending from it, so I'll put a one-third there. And so node 1 is connected to nodes 2, 3, and 5, and so I put one-third in columns 2, 3, and 5, and node 1 isn't connected to the other uh, nodes, so in those columns, including node 1, in those columns I'll put a 0. The nice thing about the um, Laplacian form of an adjacency matrix is that for node 1, I'm connected to three items. My degree is 3, and, and the value I'm putting in is 1 over the degree, so if I add all of the elements up for, the, for row 1, I get 1. So now we're going to create a special matrix from that Laplacian adjacency matrix. We'll just call this matrix A. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that Laplacian matrix and I'm going to zero out all of the rows for the nodes I've already assigned. So I've already assigned node 1, 2, 3, and 4 a position. So I'll just zero those out in my adjacency matrix, subtract the whole thing from the identity matrix. The identity matrix just has ones down the diagonal and zeros every place else. And that will give me this matrix A that I'm going to solve in order to find the placements for nodes 5, 6, 7, and 8. So I need to set up a linear system, and so we'll set up a linear system for the x-coordinates of our nodes, and then we'll set up a separate linear system for the y-coordinates. 
So the linear system we use for the x coordinates looks like this. It's my matrix A, and then I've got times x, a column vector that's just the x coordinates of my nodes. And then finally, I've got the answer, what the x-coordinates actually should be in, in the case of the first four nodes, and then zeros for the nodes I want to solve. So this is saying that 1 times x1, the x-coordinate of node 1, 1 times x1 and 0 times everything else equals 0, because that's what I've assigned. So here I've got node 0, node 1, nodes 2, and node 3. These are the x-coordinates of node 1, 2, 3, and 4. And so here I've got 1, this second row, uh, 1 times x2 is equal to 1. And the x-coordinate I've assigned for node 2 is 1. So that's what I put in these, in these first entries of this bx uh, column vector, and the remaining entries are just 0. The nice thing here is that um, if we look at row 5, row 5 says that the x-coordinate of node 5, x5, 1 times x5 minus 1 third times x1 minus 1 third times x6 minus 1 third times x7 is going to be equal to 0. That's basically setting up a linear equation so that whatever wherever I position nodes 6 and 7 they're going to impact node 5. And so we do that for uh, rows 5, 6, 7, and 8, corresponding to nodes 5, 6, 7, and 8. And we'll, we'll, when we solve this system, we'll have positions for nodes 5, 6, 7, and 8 that solve that relationship. Do the same thing for the y-coordinates. So now my by column vector is equal to the y-coordinates for nodes 1, 2, 3, and 4 that I've placed, and then it's zeros for everything else. Node 1 has 0 for the y-coordinate, node 2 has 0 for the y-coordinate, node 3 has 1 for the y-coordinate, and node 4 has 1 for the y-coordinate. And this is basically saying that y1 equals 0, y2 is equal to 0, y3 is equal to 1, y4 is equal to 1. But it's saying that the y-coordinate for node 5 is equal to whatever the y-coordinate is for uh, node 5 minus 1 third times the y-coordinate for node 1 minus 1 third the y-coordinate for node 6, and minus one-third the y-coordinate for node 7, and so on for the remaining nodes. So I've basically set up these equations for the x system. I've said x1 is equal to 0, x2 is equal to 1, x3 is equal to 0, and x4 is equal to 1, and then I've set up these equations for the x-coordinates of the remaining, and I've set up similar equations for the y-coordinate. And so if I group these together, I've basically positioned x1, y1 at the x, y coordinates for node 1 at 0, 0, uh, node 2 at 1, 0, node 3 at 0, 1, node 4 at 1, 1. And I've set up these relationships for the remaining coordinates, the four remaining coordinates. Now, you might notice something here. I'm basically saying that node 5 is going to be node 1's position plus node 6 position plus node 7 position divided by 3. So basically the position of each node is going to be the average of the position of its neighboring nodes that it shares an edge with. And that's true for all the remaining nodes. And so we fix the position, we set the position for some of our nodes, and then the remaining nodes are just going to be set to be the average of um, the nodes they're connected to. And so if I solve that system, if I solve that linear system, you can use any numerical method you like to solve that matrix problem, you get this solution. So that node 5 is at 1 third, 1 third. Node 6 is at 2 thirds, 1 third. Node 7 is at 1 third, 2 thirds. And node 8 is at 2 thirds, 2 thirds. And so each of these nodes ends up being at the average. The position of node 5 is equal to the average, the centroid of node 1, node 6, and node 7. So I take node 1 plus the position of node 6 plus the position of node 7, divide by 3, and I get node 5. So we've, we've solved for these positions of node 5, 6, 7, and 8 to find this planar layout of this graph shown here in a non-planar embedding. 
by solving a matrix problem. You don't have to solve a matrix necessarily to do this. You can do the same thing by basically starting with your nodes uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 in their fixed position and then for all the remaining nodes you can assign them random positions to begin with and then iteratively replace those node positions with the average of their neighboring nodes. And if you continually replace every node's position with the average of its neighboring node's position, those nodes will work into place where they belong. And so you can solve this system without setting up a, um, a matrix just by constantly doing that iterative procedure of uh, moving every node to the average of its neighboring nodes. So Tut's method tells us that we can solve a linear system to embed a planar graph, but it's not that difficult. Uh, you can do the exact same thing by nailing down a few of your nodes into fixed positions. And then the rest of the nodes, you just replace their position with the average of their neighbor's positions, the positions of the neighbors that share an edge with that node. If you keep doing that over and over, those nodes will relax into the exact same position that Tut's method will converge to.